Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Opal Mitchell. I work for the Central Arkansas Library System, and um, I work at the Nixon branch. Let's see, I'm going to adjust that. And um, this is the uh, <clears throat> a new program that I'm starting, uh, that I'm going to do on the first Friday of every month. And um, it's, it's a craft program that we're calling uh, First Friday Crafts. And I'm going to um, kind of introduce you to embroidery stitches um, today. <clears throat> so I'm recording it a little bit differently this time um, because the comments haven't been um, when I've been doing the, um, uh, was it Crafting with Opal programs on Thursday nights. Um, usually I have my camera turned sideways, I guess you would call it landscape, and record it, but it's been cutting off stuff on the sides and the comments haven't always been showing up correctly on that so um I've got my camera turned portrait side side now so hopefully <clears throat> hopefully the comments will show up for me I'm going to do a quick comment myself um just since we've been having problems with those showing up um and maybe it will Maybe the comments will show up. They weren't showing up for me last night when I did my um, Crafting with Opal program, and that was really disappointing because <laughs> I wasn't able to communicate with people, and that's the whole point of, for me, for doing um, live um, videos is to be able to communicate with everyone that's um, watching. So hopefully, I hope it's going to be working today. Um, I see that we've got at least a couple of people watching, so... Um, Let's see here. I'm hoping things will pop up for me so I can see who's watching so I can say hi. Um, oh, goody. Hi, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Um, I can. It, it's so funny. It pops up in the comments saying, you can bring them live on camera, which I'm sure no one's going to want me to do that. <laughs> um so anyway, I'm going to do um, just some beginning um, embroidery stitches today. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future for this program. I'm, I'm just kind of keeping it open to be able to cover any kind of crafts that I think people might be interested in learning just the basics of them. So um, if, uh, if you're ready for that, I guess I'll go ahead and switch over to the other side so I can show you the, what I have. All right, and that's just my desk there. Um, I wrote out some of the stitch names and stuff that I'm going to be um, stitching on here, and um, you can use different different needles for embroidery. There's different sizes. It depends on um, the floss that you're using, the embroidery floss. Um, it comes in um, like this. And you can actually separate the floss, but you can leave it all together like this if you want to work with it like this. Um, but you can also break it in half, like I, I've done with this one. I've um, you cut a piece and then you pull it apart, and this is pulled apart into th three threads each, um, which is in half because the the threads on here are um, six of them all together. If you do the six all together, you'll want to use a bigger um, embroidery needle. And this package here comes with several different sizes for you. Um, it, and you would probably want to use the bigger needle for that. Um, since I'm splitting mine in half, um, I'm, I'm using this size, which is a size eight. Um, I don't know, I like to do a little bit um, finer um, um, embroidery stitches. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of embroidery, but um, the little bit that I've done, I've I, that's kind of how I was taught to do it, so I didn't realize you could actually keep the, thought, the floss together without separating it to work, but your stitches just end up a lot bigger if you don't separate the threads here into different, um, like I said, this is six threads, and you can... Um, separated into three of them if you want to. And you can go smaller too because there are smaller needles I think. Um, I've never done that before. Okay so um, and you can get all the different colors too. And you can come up with your own patterns um, to 
to make different designs and so forth. I'm just going to show you how to do some of the basic stitches. Um, and then um, you can buy the fabric that's already um, got designs and stuff on it. And then you can um, fill in the designs. But um, those are the kind I like to do. I, I wrote out the stitches that I'm going to be showing you how to do today. And then I've cut up a bunch of different threads. Um, really small. And this on top is just little practice stuff that I was doing doing different things with um, yesterday. But uh, the very first stitch I'm going to go over is really quite simple. Um, it's um, called the running stitch and um, it's really when the uh, all the stitches I'm going to cover today are really really basic stitches. Um, so let me go ahead and um, thread my needle. I'm just going to pick one of these that, that I've already separated. I'll go with the blue. And I have trouble seeing, so I'm going to use my little threader that I have for sewing. If I can do this. Let's see. I'm trying to see around my camera to do this. And for the there we go. So, and you wouldn't be able to do that um, with if you hadn't separated your thread. It wouldn't. It, it may not pull it through the hole. But I'm just threading it like this. You're not gonna. You know, if you're sewing hand sewing, with uh, you would double it up whenever you're making um, your stitches. Like you would have it like this and pull your stitches through. This one you don't do that. You keep it, you pull the entire thing through and you don't double it up and you don't knot it like you do with um, just regular hand sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and move it here so you can see the first stitch that I'm going to do is the running stitch. And I've marked it on here with a, um, a marker. Um, Hopefully I can see this to do this. Um, and the marker I used was just a regular ink pen, but there's special pens that you can buy for marking uh, where you're going to be threading it. Okay, and I'm just pulling this out where I have a little bit of a thread in the back still. Mine's not knotted. Let's see. I'm trying to get to the very end. And you're just going to go one stitch length forward. Wow, this is hard to see. And you're going to just pull it all the way through. And you're going to see the marks that I made because of the, the pins that I used was really quite dark. Um, and you probably and this one doesn't erase the marker I used, so you would want to definitely maybe use like a pencil or something that the marks are a lot lighter if you were going to mark where you were going to be um, doing your threads. But this one's just very simple. You just go into it and then you'll go forward. I'm going to move that out of the way. And you just want to make the, the stitches the same length and the um, space in between the same length as your stitch when you're spacing it. I wish I had a better way to hold all of this. Let's see. But you want to evenly space it. Oops. I might have to just zoom my camera in so I can hold this further away. Let me try that. Because I'm I'm hitting the camera. Oh, oh, and it reversed. Wow, that's weird. Let's see. Okay, that'll be a little bit better. I won't hit the camera. 
<clears throat> by just at least zooming this way, it'll it'll make it a little bit easier for me. So I won't be bumping the camera every time I do a stitch. So you're just going to evenly space these out. And like I, I have written on the fabric there, it says it's a running stitch. This is one of the basic stitches. I'm just trying to... If I had this right in front of me, I wouldn't have so much trouble seeing what I was doing. <laughs> and you don't want to pull it too terribly tight. And you, like I said, you just want to do evenly spacing on this. All right, and then the next one I'm going to show you is a back stitch. Was ex it's extremely similar to this one. It's basically the same stitch, except um, you're going to be going back over. All right, so there we go. There's the running. Oops. There's your running stitch. <clears throat> and on the back stitch, I'm just going to continue on with the same thread. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to come up from behind. And then you're going to go one stitch length forward. Okay, and that's one stitch length forward. And then with this one, you're still going to go forward a stitch length trying to keep it as straight as possible but you're gonna go back instead of forward so I'm gonna go back into the stitch that I came out of earlier just right next to it right on top of it so that's that's why it's called a back stitch because you're gonna go back and then you'll go forward again one stitch length and then you'll go back into that one and then just all the way across you just evenly I made these stitches a little bit longer than the uh, when I did the running stitch but you're just going back into the stitch before okay and then just evenly forward and like I said I'm, I'm using the ink that I use to write all this on here it's not not really the what you would want to use this was just an ink pen I had laying around I didn't have a proper one to use for this type of project and you're just going to go back into that one until you get to the very end and do one more Okay, and then that's the back stitch. All right, and see, so you can see the black marks in between it because um, I marked it with that marker. So you don't want to use the same thing that I used. Okay, and then I think I might change thread for the split stitch. So let me find that real quick. figure out what I'm going to do. Um, let's go with the green, I guess. Um, sorry, I'm having to re-thread this in the middle. I have to bring this around where I can see it.
to get this in, in view here where you can see it. All right, so with this one, you're going to, all of these, you're always going to start from the back. And looks like my thread kind of, what did it do? Hmm. Okay, don't want to pull it all the way through. Okay, so on the split stitch, you're going to go forward the same stitch length. I have a puppy dog that's fussing at me right now. So let me... So you go forward one stitch like that, and then hold on, I'm sorry. My dog is wanting me to pick her up to put her in her bed. Okay. Got to make your your and your spoiled animals happy, right? <laughs> Alrighty. So once you do the that stitch, the split stitch is is what it means. Um, once you go through it, it, go forward one stitch. You're gonna come back through the middle of that stitch. So so you're gonna come back through the. I guess I should have used a. a lighter color thread so you can see that better. So I'm just coming back through the middle of that stitch. And then sorry about that. And then you're going to go if I can get my thread to cooperate with me. Then you're going to go forward another stitch length. And then, and this would look better with um, a thread that hasn't been um, split in half. But like I said, this would be, if you split your thread in half, um, this gives you a little bit finer um, stitches whenever you're doing embroidery. But you're just going to go forward one stitch length. And then you'll come back up through the middle of that stitch. And I know I'm taking it down too far there. Because I've got less threads to go through since I'm using only three. And then you'll go forward another stitch. And then you'll come back through it the middle of that stitch. Uh, I don't feel like I was through the middle of it. There we go. And I'll just do two more there. I've got so many threads back there now I'm getting kind of tangled. here and it will look a little bit better if you um, use more threads I kind of wish I hadn't been taught how to do it with the three threads originally because I'm uh, um, watching these videos I kind of like the way that um, they're working with them um, more threads okay and then you just come back kind of close down to where the other one was to end it. Alright, so that's your split stitch. I think I'm going to switch threads again because that green is so hard to see. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And we're going to do a stem stitch next. So let me let me switch. Um, what would be brighter? Let's Let's use orange. That'll be a lot better. When I was working with the green, it, it didn't seem that dark. But um, on camera, it's definitely too dark. Okay. And with the stem stitch, let me get... Ready for that. 
Alright, so you always gonna start from the back. Let's see if I can get and the first stitch is gonna be a little bit longer. Let's see. Then your other stitches. So you're going to go forward a little bit further than you normally would. Oops, and I shouldn't have pulled it tight. Because what you're going to do is you're going to come up through the middle of that stitch. Let's see if I can do that. Because that's where the line is. You're going to come up through the middle there. And then you're going to pull that tight, like so. And then you're going to go a normal stitch length forward. And don't pull it all the way. You want to be able to see you're going to come up through the stitch right here that you went through. If I can see it. And you're not gonna you're gonna stay on on this side and they said that um, you can come up on either side with this one um, either bring your stitches up on the right side or on the left side it's just as long as you do it the same t same way every time so now I'm going a normal stitch length forward and before I pull it all away I'm going to come up through this one and I'm going to stay on the right side and then I'm going to come forward again a normal stitch length and each time you're not going to pull it all the way you're just going to come back up through this other one and stay on the same side each time Let's see. Now I'm starting to see. Oh, Terry. Hey, Terry. I don't know if um, I was able to see Cindy's comment earlier. Um, and I'm seeing the waves, so I guess the comments are working today, even though they weren't working yesterday. Oh, I'm off camera there. But always bring it up on the same, like I'm bringing it up on the right side. You can bring it up on the left side, just um, like I said, you'll need to do it the same, on the same side every time. Alright, and then that's the stem stitch. And I think I'm going to stick with, I think I might have enough thread to do the chain stitch. So let me see. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, so I just did the stem stitch. I'm trying to, I'm looking at my notes to the side here. <laughs> That's why. And then we want to do the chain stitch. Okay. All right, the chain stitch is. Um, it's kind of interesting. It kind of reminds me. Of, I haven't done the lazy daisy yet, but it kind of reminds me like a of a lazy daisy in a way, but not not quite. It just a, it's similar but not not exactly like um, all right so let me think I guess I've got enough thread to do that all right so for this chain one you're gonna come up from the back and then you're gonna go back down into that same Spot, which can be difficult and you're not going to pull it all the way because you're going to come back up one stitch length over through the middle of it and then you're going to pull it 
and you're not going to pull it real tight and see like I said you don't want to use the black ink like I used for this because it's it's just going to show really bad and then you're going to go back down into the middle of that and before you pull it tight you go over one more stitch length if I can get it straight and then pull it tight like so and that's see this is showing really bad on mine alright and then you go back through the middle of it and before you pull it all the way you're gonna come up one stitch length over on this side through the middle of it and pull it tight and then go back down through the middle oh I didn't mean to do that that's okay I didn't pull it too oh darn oh I see what happened I messed up I was trying to move my fabric out of the way here I'll just do it again there we go I lost my thread but that's not too hard to fix there I get, I'm getting fabric folding under on the other side so it's kind of making it difficult I'm trying to loop my thread over there we go I kind of saved that <laughs> even though I messed up and, I'm, and my thread is getting really short too so that's making it hard alright so you go back down the middle of it and before and I'm having a hard time not pulling my thread all the way through I'm trying not to hey Samantha I wish I had something that could hold this loop steady for me while I'm doing this alright and so I'm almost to the end here you don't want them terribly tight and then I'm coming one more stitch over I'm having a lot of difficulty holding this straight okay. <laughs> at least yeah. there we go And so that's your chain stitch, even though I ca it came loose from my needle. <laughs> oh, thank you, Samantha. I love all the, the classes that you do. I wish I could go to your classes. <laughs> uh, alrighty, so that's, that's done. And um, I needed to go back through it, but I accidentally pulled it out of my needle, so... That's what happens when you're doing live videos. If I wasn't doing a live video, I could redo it again and make it look seamless. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't mind. Alright, so. And then I'll just go right back down next to it to finish it off. To hold it down. Alright, and so that's your the st chain stitch. And let's see here. Um, I'm going to take that out and switch threads again. The next one, we're just going to do a straight stitch, which is super, super simple. Um, let me get my list together here. Yeah, that's the next one, the straight stitch. Um, honestly, I don't know. Let's see, what color? It, I haven't ever, I don't know. Ow that I've ever done the straight stitch on anything the project because um, it's basically to me like some of the other stitches I guess if you just do one straight stitch on something I thought I'd do all the basic stitches even though I'm trying to get this fabric out of the way okay as straight stitches pretty much what it sounds like 
It's just one long straight stitch. And you just go straight across. It seems almost silly even showing how to do it because that's it. That's a straight stitch. <laughs> okay, now the French knot is the next one. And I guess doing a simple one um, right before a really hard one can be, be a good idea. Alright, so you come up from the back from for the French knot. I'm going to sit this down for just a second. Alright. The French knot can be, oops, a little bit difficult. Um, and I think it's a little more difficult when you're working with um, a lot less thread than what I'm working with. Um, if you're working with one that hasn't been um, um, pulled apart like mine, like if you're working with the six um, six pieces of thread instead of the um, uh, the three like I have. And this one, I'm probably going to have to lay it down to do it. So I'm going to see if I can tilt this a little bit more. Because I'm going to have to hold, use my hand to hold on to the threads at the same time. Let's see. All right. So... And it gets all tangled up on you, too. All right, so with this one, you're going to be wrapping it around twice. And then, hmm. <laughs> and then going back in there to that same hole. Let's see how well I can do this while trying to hold on to all of this stuff. And it's not going to work. Yep. All right, so let me try that again. This is super hard with a camera in front of you. It's one of the harder ones to do. Okay, so let's try that again. So you come up through, and I didn't have a, I probably should knot it to keep it from coming all the way through. Okay, because you need to keep it really taut and tight while you're doing this. Actually, you know, to make it easier on myself, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knot the thread on the other end um, because um, it's just easier. Let's see. Let's see if that will come through. Okay, don't want it to move on me here. And I'm going to pull this kind of tight. Alrighty, let's try. Um, maybe I should angle this differently. Oh, I see my problem. I got, I got backwards when I was doing it. You're wrapping it around from not the thread that's in there, but the thread that's on your needle. Always try to do that. And but trying to get it back into the same hole that you went into is difficult. And you're supposed to hold everything nice and tight too while you're doing it. And mine got tangled. Yep. I'm just gonna come back up. Shoot, I wish I could see what I'm doing. The person, when I was watching her videos, she actually had something that was holding her loop, or her, this in place while she was doing it. Okay. Man. Okay. I keep confusing myself. Alright. I, I was doing it right again. I just got myself... Oh, there went my knot. That's the one thing. I was determined to do this French knot, even though it's one of the harder ones. Okay. So I'm wrapping it around twice and trying to keep it. That's the hardest thing, keeping it tight. Here. I'm going to keep that a little further away. And I'm working with fewer threads, so that makes it harder, too.
probably. Yeah, and that should have been tighter than that. See, it's not tight enough. <laughs> that knot. Darn it. <laughs> Let me just start all over. I knew this was going to trick me up. I should have went with the the six um, pieces of thread instead of the two. Because that makes it really that much more difficult doing a French knot. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to take a breath and try this again. Okay. I am determined to get this right. I wonder how they're able to to do this okay so close to and that's the key keeping it um, nice and tight Y'all seeing me struggle here. You'll understand why this one is so hard. And this fabric is probably not the best fabric. It's just some dish cloth. Um, let's see, I'm going to turn that so we can... And it pulls through. See? This thread... I should have used something different to show this because this is not working yeah I think I might have to go to a bigger needle and more thread to be able to show this one to you I'm sorry <laughs> um and this has gotten really really frayed too the thread has that I'm working with all right well I'm gonna move on because I need it's gonna take me to I've wasted y'all's time <laughs> doing this one so um I'll come back to it and show you some of the other ones that are a little bit simpler. The Lazy Daisy is um, super simple and I'm going to show you on how to do um, uh, you're always going to start on the end that's got the point which I'm going to do an actual flower so you start in the middle. And um, hey! Hey Myra! I'm, I'm actually being able to see people's comments today. It's it's amazing. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm gonna come up through here, and um, you want to go back through the same hole because we're gonna be doing a little loop. But you don't want to pull the loop completely tight. And you want to come back up on this side here. And it depends on, you know, how big of a flower you're making. And you're going to come up through the loop that you just made to hold it down tight. Come on. I think my threads kind of had it a little bit because um, I've got a knot back there. It's kind of causing problems. Hey, Terry. Yeah. I'm beginning to think working with six, <clears throat> six strands of thread instead of three was probably better and easier when you're a beginner. And then you go back down the other side right next to it as close to the other stitch as possible to hold down the little loop. And mine got kind of twisted, too. You want it to be a little bit of a loop. Okay, and then do the same thing. I'm going to try to come back through the middle here. And then go back down because we're going to be making another loop. 
you want it to lay nice and flat and mine's kind of curling and everything and then twisting which oh don't want that to happen you want it to lay down nice and flat for you if you can oh I've got all these threads back here that's causing problems here I'm gonna flip that over so I can find my needle again all right so I'm gonna pick one of these little spots is where I want my loop to go and then I'm gonna pull it up and try not to yeah except that's not a good place to come up through oh this is coming unthreaded so let me make sure my I'm gonna put that down for a second okay so my thread won't come unthreaded okay and then that's that's the other one and you just go around doing the same thing um, you'll want to go back as close to the other stitch as possible thanks Terry okay so my first one is kind of twisted but the second one that's that's the way you want it to look all right and then to continue on come back up and then back down in there again and I like how this one is working for me it's staying a nice little loop for me so I can come right back through it and hold it down and you just um, tighten it but don't don't make it too tight oh no what just happened oh my loop got to it pulled up well wouldn't you know my little loop got messed up on me there we go I must have pulled something from the other side that, that caused it to do that all right so we'll do we'll finish the flower here oh another Terry I know is on there hey Terry <laughs> all right and then you go back in there so you can get your loop And you probably want to have a little more thread to work with and I'm running out of thread here and you come back up to secure that little loop down wish my hands were a little more steady with all the stuff I'm juggling okay so I've almost mine's gotten kind of twisted at different places but this is the type of stuff too like with any other craft you want to continue practicing and doing it more because the more you do it you know you always get better and go back down the middle and I think I'm almost out of thread here and then you come back here and grab your loop which make sure it's not twisted all right so there's my little flower and then you close it off by going back down all right so there's there's the lazy daisy and that's how you do that okay so I'm gonna have to switch thread again so let me find some and trying to see how much time I have left um, okay the blanket stitch that's a, a fairly simple one too I think we'll do that one let me find some I think red will show up pretty good so we'll go with some red thread and where did my needle go I'm gonna thread this off off screen here for a second while I uh, 
so I can see better on what I'm doing. Okay. The brighter threads definitely show up better on the screen. Okay, so with the blanket stitch, I may not, I have a really long line for this one, so I may not go all the way across because it's a pretty simple one. Okay, so you start from the back. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure I don't pull my thread all the way through. Oh, I did. Let's do that again. I probably should tie a knot in it to keep it from doing that, but I'm trying not to actually, oh well, <laughs> I'm going to pull it loose again. So you're going to come up a little ways for this one, and then you're not going to pull it all the way through, you're going to come back down here where your line is at like one stitch length and come up through that okay so there's your sp first blanket stitch I wish the other one underneath was secured it would have a straighter look so that's your that one okay and then I'm gonna secure it Let's see Um, oops, nope. What am I doing? You're going to come up to your next one and not, not pull it all the way through. I was trying to do something else. And, oh, there's, I pulled it down too tight. You come back over here and underneath it like so. Boy. Wish I'd gotten mine a little bit straighter than that to show you how that works. And it would look a little bit better too if I used more than three threads. So you go back under there and don't pull it all the way like I'm doing. I'm going to have to move this fabric out of the way so I can get a hold of this better and then come back one stitch length and you want to keep it um, lined up with the one above that you're doing which I may not be doing very a very good job of that let's see I'm gonna put that down for it my hand is really really shaking there from holding this stuff. So maybe if I do it like this. And then make some smaller. Maybe I should have, instead of doing this on a table, I should have done this um, in my lap. That might have been easier for me. Okay. And so that's that one. And I'm not keeping it real straight here, but. And that's just something you have to work on with um, with this, is keeping it straight. And um, there's different markers and stuff that you can actually buy that's for this type of thing. So you can mark your lines better. Okay. And the red definitely shows up better than some of those darker colors. Alright, and then... I did a bad job on the end there, but there's the blanket stitch. All right, and then let's see, what else is there? Oh, and you have to secure it, and I didn't do it because I was eager to go on to the next stitch. And I will tell you, there's a lot of really good um, embroidery um, videos out there. Um, I found quite a few really good ones. Um, the one that I liked the best that I found um, 
let's see, what was her name? She has a YouTube channel, um, Cutesy Crafts. Um, she's got a YouTube channel, and um, she she does a really good job with all of the stitches. So if you want to learn a lot more, um, I think. Let's see, the woven wheel. That one takes a little bit of time to do. Um, I guess I could try it. It might be the only other one. Let's see what I might have time to show you. Um, oops. So let me, I'll do yellow. That seems like a nice bright color. And you might be able to see what I'm doing better with that one. All right, so let me thread that one. All right, oops, there we go. I'm gonna try to get that ready. Okay, with the woven wheel, oh, you kind of have to start out. I'm stretching a little bit because my back was hurting from leaning over this work here. <laughs> um, you're going to start out, if I can get this back here. If I can find, oh, I'm way in this corner. Um, you're going to start out on one of your corners here and go to this center. See if I can find find my thread without it pulling all the way through. I'm trying to not to. Okay, so you're going to start on the end and go in the middle. I've got all kinds of threads underneath here now, and you're going to do your star first. Shoot, what did I do? I'm going to have to try this again. Okay, so go down the middle. Oops, I'm dropping my needle here. I think my hands are getting tired. Okay. But you're just going to keep going in the center here and coming out to the side. This is kind of like your um, basis for it. Because you're going to be weaving threads around these. Okay. So we got our little wheel started. Alright, and then you're going to come back towards the center. And you're going to weave it kind of like, I mean, it's like weaving. You're going over this one and you're going under this one. And then you're going over this one, under this one. Oops. Trying not to get my fabric because I'm just weaving around this. And then you're going over this one. And then now we're going under this one. And you're just going to continue. It's just like weaving. You're going over and under. And I'm going over that one, but under this one. And so you have an odd number of threads on here, because that's what you want. Oops, did I go? That one is too... Oh, it's my beginning one. I need to secure it somehow so it won't come loose. I'm going to hold on to it. Oh, and I just pulled it off my needle. Alright, 
right, I was going along good there, and then I did that, didn't I? on there. Okay. I think I'm going to turn this over real quick and not and not that um, because if I don't that one particular one is going to come loose. So I'm going to flip it over and knot it on this end. I was in a hurry and not nodding any of my other ones. I guess I was just making things more difficult on myself, huh? Which now it's going to be really hard to get a knot really close to that. I wonder if I could just... Yep, my other threads are getting... Hmm... I need something to secure that. I um, wonder if I could tie it to something just to keep it from coming loose because that's not is not going to hold it. So I'm going to tie it to something else real quick just to secure it in place. This is not normally how you would do it. I'm just doing this so it'll work better while we're doing this. Okay. Okay. And you're just working on top of here for now. And so now this is going to hold for me a lot better. So I went underneath that one. So I'm going over this one and then under this one. And you could kind of skip steps by doing this number. And do it a little bit faster. And I need to pull my thread a little bit more to the end there. So as long as you can keep up with what you're going over... I'm going over that one and under this one. And then over this one and under this one. And then over this one and under this one. This one does take a little bit of time. But it's a it's a cute stitch. Then over that one, under this one, over this one, and under this one. Just around and around here. Ow. <laughs> and I think you get the gist of this. You want to go... Um, I'm probably not going to finish this one, but... You just keep going around until you fill it up and I may not have I kept my threads really short because most of these um, stitches I was showing you were um, small stitches um, so for doing this one you would definitely want to put more thread on there than this because I'm not going to have enough to finish out this actually but I think you can see and once, um, let's see if I can show you. Once you finish going around and around on this, um, you're going to have to secure it from the back. So let me see here. All right. <clears throat> And you want to go around and around until you get to the very, very edges here and you cover up these little corners. 
you because you don't want them to show so and it's going to kind of curl up around the edges a little bit kind of flower like from going over and under them and then when you get completely done of course you'll do like with the other ones at one of the points um actually um <clears throat> you'll have to go back under there on one of the points and then you'll um tie it off in the back but uh, I'm not going to be able to finish it because I didn't do enough thread on this one to do that one. All right, well, um, oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Terry. She was telling me that. Um, so uh, that's it for this time. Um, like I said, if if you want to learn some other stitches, um, if you're interested in um, embroidery, um, the there's lots of good videos out there if you go onto youtube the one that i i watched was um cutesy crafts and she's got a whole channel of different things but she's got <clears throat> a bunch of embroidery i'm losing my voice embroidery videos <clears throat> let's see here i'll switch this back up that you can watch um and um and there's there's other other um really good embroidery um uh, videos that you can watch but the, those hers were pretty good I I looked at some other ones and uh, I really liked hers so yeah if you if that's interesting to you check those out um, she's got some more advanced ones on there too if you wanted to learn some of the more advanced embroidery stitches and I, I kind of find embroidery neat because um, if you want to do simple um, personalized gifts um, like I'll show you um, you can buy some of those um oh like hand towels um well i've got one that was done for me but it was done on a machine but you could do hand towels um like like the ones that you can buy like at walmart um and then uh, well this is reversed on this camera but um this one was done on machine, but you can do your own little designs on a hand towel and give it to someone. Um, but, you know, if you don't have an embroidery machine and want to do it by hand, and that's, it takes more time. I was looking at this one. Uh, it takes more time to do the, the hand stitched ones, and it's kind of fun. Um, you just need a hoop to secure it to to hold it um, taunt while you do that. Um, and then, uh, well, yeah, I guess you could do that on those. I'm just thinking about the back of it might be kind of kind of messy if you do it because you have all the knots and stuff. But um I'm sure there's videos on how to clean that up too. I haven't haven't done anything like that before. Most of this like the hand towels I've done, I've I've done like applique and stuff like that with those for um projects. Okay. Well, um if if anyone wants to make a comment about um what kind of other crafts um, to cover um, during this program because <laughs> this one I made it just from the title first Friday crafts we can cover different types of crafts I'm thinking next month I might do um, some weaving um, I've got some sets of these little baskets that you can um, weave and do um, it, it's with yarn that you can um, make a weaved basket out of yarn um, and it's from a class that I did quite a few, I guess it's been three or four years ago. And um, I still have some of the kits from that. And we've got plenty of yarn too. So I, for that m next month, I think I might do that one and have the free kits to give out if um, you want to participate and do, do that one. So just check it back um, for more crafts. And if you think of something you'd like to learn, um, just make a comment or send a, a private message to the, our our library page about any crafts that you'd like to see. All right, that's it for this time. Um, I'll, maybe I'll see y'all next week for the next Crafting with Opal on Thursday at 7. Um, that one's going to be a knitting class, and you can get um, uh, free supplies for that class um, by calling the library starting Monday um, to sign up for the supplies for that one. All right. See y'all later. Bye.